the only cleaning solution left at the store was bottles of bleach. So now my hands smell like a public swimming pool for some reason. Anyways, um, today we are going to look at a pen, which someone posted in the comments that they wanted me to look at. This is the new Moon Man T1 Piston Fountain Pen. Looks pretty cool so far. Let's slice it open. Okay, unfortunately, when I cut it open, I think I cut too deep. I cut right across, uh, like I harmed the case. This is a nice little case. I like that. In the past, I have reviewed two previous other Moon Man pens, which I'll show you right before I pop this open. So here we have the Moon Man M2. This is the first Moon Man pen I ever got, which I was very pleased with. It left a good first impression on me. First of all, I was very happy with the uh, just the huge amount of ink it can hold. You should have to fill this with an eyedropper, right? Here's the Moon Man M1, and then the second one I got was the Moon Man C1. Wait, did I, did I say that right? M2 and then C1. I'm very happy with both of these. Both of these are just, uh, you just fill them up with huge amounts of ink like that. Just You just kind of open them up and then you just pour in ink. And uh, they make me happy. They make me really happy. So now someone recommended, they wanted to see what my thoughts were about this, the Moon Man T1, which I think is slightly different in that It is piston filled. The packaging seems pretty standard for Moon Man. I think I remember something similar like this for the previous pens. Just like a foam, kind of a foam cut out here. Now right off the bat, I like the aesthetics of it already. The crisp labeling here, the clear acrylic, and then this part, it feels like is metal. Here on the nib you can see well, you can see the little reflections of both my lights. You could have kind of a warm light over here and a brighter cool light over here. An umbrella light and a box light. But there's some Chinese character there. And then it says Moon Man here. And then I'm guessing you turn... Well, of course, this screws off. It says Moon Man on the nib. And there's like a little... Uh, Mountain. I think the other ones have that mountain on the nib too. No, that one doesn't. The M2 doesn't have the mountain, but the the C1 does. I wonder if that's uh, some significant mountain. So this part feels like it's metal, I think. When I first pulled it out of the box, it felt like it was metal just because of how cool it was to the touch. But now it's warmed up in my hand. It doesn't feel that metallic anymore. Um, I don't know. I don't know. How can you... Okay, now that I tap these two metal things together, they sound very metallic, okay? I don't think plastic would make this sound, right? Yeah, so I think it's metal. I don't know why it's so hard to tell when, when, what's, if some things are metal <laughs> these days. We turn this, and the pest piston goes in, and the piston goes out, and that's how you fill it up. Uh, you just dip the nib down in your ink bottle, and twist and turn and uh, it all fills up. One thing I do want to address is that I was very happy with these two first Moon Men, Moon Men, Moon Mans I got and how the designs were kind of unlike anything I'd really seen before. Of course, you know, I had seen uh, this design kind of reminded me of this, the, my Opus 88, okay. It's similar, but still kind of its own thing. It has no clip, it's very different. It keeps from rolling around just because it has a flat side right here. Right, And this is also similar to um, a lot of the other torpedo and cigar shaped pens I've seen in the past. But once again, it's very minimalistic in that it has no uh, clip on the cap. When I, bring, when I come back to this pen, I noticed uh, right off the bat, this cap reminded me of some of the other pens I have, namely Kawiko pens. And if I bring out these Kawiko pens, you might notice the similarities. There's a Kawiko Sport. And uh, here's some other Kawiko. I don't remember which. what's this one called exactly. 
Um, but like if I pop pop off these lids, if we hold these two pen lids right next to each other, uh, it doesn't take a genius to notice that these are very similar. And I'm not saying anyone copied anyone because, um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of pens out there that all look very similar. Just recently, you know, just a second ago, I was noticing that, you know, this is a cigar shaped pen or torpedo. I'm not sure what the difference is, but there are a lot of, for example, cigar and torpedo shaped pens. I have a few right here. You know, here's just four I pulled out of my drawer. And am I trying to say that one of these people copied everyone else about, you know, they all have kind of the same pen shape and lid shape. Who's to say who thought of that first? I don't know. But I don't think the Moon Man, like, took, like, the, you know, the 3D CAD file for, you know, that Kawiko had for this and copied it and took it for theirs. Because for one thing, in this lid, this is a nine-sided shape. Interestingly enough, a nonagon refers to the number of sides a polygon has. But if you, if you refer to the number of points it has, it would be called an Enneagram, nine points, which is also a um, popular type of personality test or a way of categorizing personality types these days. I just, have just heard about it a lot, the Enneagram. Anyways, this is not nine sides. This is uh, 11 sides, Hendecagon. Anyway, so it's a little bit different. I just thought it looked similar. Um, and this one's plastic. This one's metal. I'm sure uh, Kawiko makes metal versions of theirs also. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we should we should uh, we should try it out. It looks good when it spins in the light like that. I just think it's interesting. It's probably good that pen companies are playing off of each other like this. Anyways, I like the multifaceted pen design, uh, pen cap like this. Anyways, um, plus this kind of combines two of my favorite things about pens clear demonstrator pens like these are some of my favorite types of pens right clear ones um and also metal pens love those so let's get some ink of course i'm going to do something very exciting like i always do and put black ink in here yes i know there are probably other pen channels that do um, exciting things like putting, where is my black ink, by the way? It's around here somewhere. They probably put all sorts of fun, exciting, sheening, shimmering uh, inks in their pens, but uh, I just want to put black ink in here, okay. Dip and twist. The ink like squirts up in there. Right, we're loaded up and wiped off. Oh, juicy. Moon. Man. Very. Juicy. I like it. And I'm not drawing on any special paper right now. This is just like sheets of cardstock I bought in like a 1000 pack. So this is just pretty standard stuff. And uh, I think you get the idea. It works. It just works, okay? It pops on and off of the back. Uh, it, it twists on and off here. Um, it has a huge reservoir because the whole thing is a piston, unlike the other two Moon Man pens I've tried, which are just eyedropper, which also works well because I use a um, like a blunted, uh, like an unsharp syringe for that. You can just buy packs of these. Um, pretty convenient still. And sometimes I use this for even other types of pens. Let's draw with it, okay? Let's draw. Because sometimes, you know, you're stuck inside for a while. And uh, 
What better to do than sit around reviewing pens and drawing with them? All right, I've got some coffee here. I was just thinking I would like to have what is colloquially known as x-ray vision, or what we call x-ray vision, but I don't, with a couple of caveats, if that's how you say the word. First of all, I don't want it for any uh, weird reasons, like you might think off the top of your head, um, and I don't want it to look like an x-ray, like you might get at the doctor's office, right? I don't want it in black and white, and I don't want all these weird, uh, like, half tones and a bunch of different things being see-through at different levels. I just, I, I'm very, uh, for a large portion of my life, I've been very obsessed with cross-sections. That's what I really want, is cross-section vision. Uh, I want to be able to see cross-sections of things. What's inside of things? Uh, have you ever had this conversation with your friends? You know, like, hey, what if you could choose any superpower, what would it be? Right? And for a long time, I've kind of given the maybe annoying cop-out answer that I want Superman. I want the Superman kind of suite of powers. And for a long time, I didn't even think about uh, that he, Superman kind of classically has some sort of x-ray supervision, doesn't he? He can see through things, into things. He has like lasers that can burst out of his eyes. Am I thinking of the right Superman? Maybe he has different powers in different uh, universes or different versions of himself. But... Um, Usually the reason I say I want Superman powers is because I've also wanted to be able to fly for a long time. And if you can fly uh, at great speeds, you probably also need to be invincible because what if you're flying at, you know, a thousand miles an hour through the air and you hit a bird or a speck of something? If you're going really, really fast or even if you're running really, really fast, what if you're running really fast and you tripped? Uh, you would die instantly if you hit a bird going fast, even even less than 100 miles, you know, going like 50 miles an hour and you hit a bird, you'd probably die or be seriously injured. So you need invincibility. Um, also, I thought that Superman's powers would be very interesting and useful because if you say, I just want his powers, you really would be invincible. You'd be even more powerful than Superman because, correct me if I'm wrong, but his real, his main weakness is the existence of... Uh, pieces of his home planet, Krypton, right? Kryptonite? Kryptonite is his weakness. And if I just said I want his powers, then Kryptonite wouldn't wouldn't necessarily also exist, so I wouldn't have any weakness, right? And I guess he also needs to recharge in the sun. So that's one thing I'd be okay with. I could recharge in the sun sometimes. I've seen that in the movies. I haven't read a lot of the comic strips. Anyways, going back to the vision thing, what I want to be able to do is see cross sections of things. And I mean, for a large portion of my life, I've, whenever I went to the public library, I would always check out those amazing books by like, a, I think his name is Stephen Beastie. He makes so many amazing drawings. I can't imagine how many hours this guy has spent drawing these incredible drawings of cross sections of castles, boats, I mean, like ships, uh, space stations buildings, you know, all these amazing things he drew cross sections of, helicopters, right? They're incredible. I've spent so many hours and hours and hours just pouring over them. But there's other books too. I remember this one book, it was something, it was like a, it was about an apartment. It was like a cross section of apartment and each page showed like different rooms in the, this like really tall apartment and it showed like the, the inner workings of the apartment and also the people inside the apartment. Has anyone else ever seen this book? Um, I loved that book. I need to find it again someday. But basically what I want is to be able to look at something, uh, whether it's my desk or, uh, you know, the wall or my leg, and just see like a clear cross section. I just want to see, I want to be able to see into it clearly, as clearly as I can see the outside, outside of my leg right now, I want to be able to see into it. I think that'd be super cool. It'd be so interesting. Now, a lot of things in life, uh, such as desks and walls and legs, have been cut open already. I mean, it's been documented. Like, there's whole websites. Uh, if uh, There's like a site uh, like Reddit. It has a whole subreddit 
dedicated to things cut in half where you can just look at the inside of things, whether it's, you know, cars or golf balls. And I love that. I love looking at those pictures, but I think it would just be so interesting to like walk down the street and just look at the inside of a tree or look at the inside of uh, the sidewalk or just sit in my apartment and look at the inside of my keyboard or my coffee cup right here or this pen right and just see what's on the inside of everything or just lie on the floor and just look at what the inside of my the linoleum on my floor is or look at all the in all the things between my floor and the ceiling below it what's all in there all the inner workings of everything and it made me wonder how superman ever got anything done when he can see so many more things than everyone else how he can just walk down the street but then I thought, hey, we can walk down the street and we can see a lot of things that we're kind of really used to. Maybe we're kind of desensitized to all the amazing things that we can see. Like we can see the bark on the tree, which if you look really closely at it or even less closely at it, it's still really interesting. We've just been alive for years and we've seen a lot of bark, haven't we? So we're like, yeah, it's bark. But if you look closely at it, it's really interesting. All the patterns, how the little chunks of bark interlock and everything. But still, I mean, I've seen I've seen what a tree looks like cut in half, but still I'd like to see. Be able to just walk down the street and look at the inside, the rings and the inner workings of every tree as I walk by it. And I also thought when something is like too far away to see, I it's usually because there's something in the way, right? I If you had x-ray vision you would pretty much have infinite vision as well. You would be able to see pretty much as far as you wanted, infinitely, right? Like I, if you went on a trip, if you're driving uh, to McDonald's, like the nearest McDonald's I can't see from here, but I would always, you would always be able to see your destination, whether you're driving across town or across country. You could see right through um, everything in your way and see where you're trying to get to. That is, if I'm understanding uninhibited uh, x-ray vision the way I'm imagining it, right? Or maybe if you wanted to see something in Tokyo, you could just look straight through the earth. You know, I'm imagining that you could control how far you look through things. And wow, that would be so cool to look into the earth. I mean, most of what we understand about the earth, I think, is mostly based on like experiments we've been performing, you know, based on... You know, we made assumptions based on you know, like measurements and magnets. I don't know how we've, I don't know how scientists have figured out what's in the earth, but I could look down inside the earth, past the crust and into the mantle and, you know, and into the, the core and see the core of the earth. How amazing would that be? And then if I wanted to look at the stars, I could x-ray right through the, X-ray right through the atmosphere of the Earth, and the stars would suddenly become in incredibly clear. And I guess things wouldn't become more uh, more magnified. That's the only downside. Things would still be very small, but I could still see that they're there. I mean, we can still see stars right now, even though they're very far away. I guess just because they're very bright. I don't know. It's just I feel like this idea of being able to see through things. Um, this very powerful idea, one that I feel like I could play around with a lot and hopefully I would not get tired of very quickly. I hope. I trust. Yeah, I want to be able to look through things and into things. Maybe it's something about wavelengths. Do you think soon, someday, there will be kind of eye augmentations where we can absorb different wavelengths or I don't, I'm sure at one point I learned how eyes worked as far as, you know, there's like everything in the light bounces off of things and it goes into our eyes and then our brain, uh, interprets it into images, which we see or something, but there's all sorts of other wavelengths that bounce off other stuff, you know, like quarks, electrons, all this other stuff that bounces off other matter in the world. Maybe you could get augmentations that would interpret all of that stuff. Huh? Huh? Maybe? Just spitballing here. Anyways, 
that would be a cool superpower. Just thinking. All right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Okay.